Well, happy Christmas 2022. And here we are. Who'd believe that we've got to this point again? The Christmas tree, I think, up in my garden is just is still up there from last year. And we're, we're now looking for the, uh, the, the Christmas tree holder that um, always eludes us at this time. Um, and so much has happened for so many of you. Some awful stuff has happened for so many of you. It's been a hard year for so many. And for many, it's been a, a, a time of loss or a time of illness and dealing with illness. For others, it's been a time where illness has passed. Um, for others, it's been a time when we've rejoiced in rekindling relationships um, that we lost during lockdown. And I think actually it's been, it's been lovely to see that as well. It's been lovely also to see the community coming together to help each other and to um, minister and to, to, for use of want of a better word, to the needs of other people. Your generosity has been legendary, again, in giving. And um, I, I celebrate that and I celebrate this community. We just thought actually we couldn't do a live one this year. Um, it was a lot of work and we were too, too exhausted. We'd been out on the road and so uh, between myself, Rachel and Sue, we've put this together for you and we trust that you enjoy this carol service that we've been doing for the last two years and it's difficult not to do it now. And so we've, uh, we've, we've put it together for you and we trust that you enjoy it, you sing along and uh, you might even spot yourself during this, this particular carol service. Anyway, God bless you and enjoy the time together. A 
And so, to our reading from Isaiah, for to us a child is born. Verse 2 from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it. This is the word of the Lord and we say thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God.
And so to that beautiful carol, Adore, the one that you were involved in recording, so many of you out there. And uh, what a, it's a really beautiful carol, actually. And we've got used to doing that one um, and listening to that one a lot. And it was um, the beautiful arrangement by Mark Edwards and, um, and you singing on it. And it really does encapsulate that beautiful, oh, come let us adore him, a cross between that and in the bleak midwinter, what can I give him, poor as I am. If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what I can, I give him, give my heart. And so enjoy watching yourselves. And, oh, come, let us adore.
Come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore Him. The Lord, worship Christ the Lord. And now my lovely wife, who uh, gave me a kidney a year and a half ago, is now going to come and read to, read to us from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 37. So that's lovely. Thank you, Sue. The birth of Jesus foretold, as in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Oh 
And so uh, to our reading, uh, read by our own Rachel Lawrence, um, who normally is behind the scenes, um, apart from two weeks ago when she was bang right in the middle of it, right at the beginning. It's beginning to look like Christmas. I was going to sing it was beginning to look like Rachel everywhere you go. Um, however, what, what she's done for us beautifully is she's read, um, I think, a, a, a reading that she's read when she was a child, from Luke 2, 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus. And she reads it so beautifully, I'm sure you will agree. So here's Rachel to read it for us now. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Christ the Savior. 
Well, uh, from the many voices of JV in Silent Night, um, to coming towards Christmas when it's not going to be such a silent night and maybe the whole family once again descend on us for a number of days and we remember why they left years ago and we rejoiced at that time. We loved having them as kids, didn't we? And then it got, it got not so silent and then they left everything on the floor and then you thought, hold on, and then you love seeing them when they come back. Um, and all of that stuff that Christmas holds for us, that dichotomy of, um, of sadness and happiness, sadness that those that we loved, maybe not still with us, um, uh, our own experiences that we, we're not going to have two of, the, two of our parents here with us on Christmas Day. We'll rejoice to have my mother, my mother but... Uh, Sue's mum isn't going to be here. My father's not going to be here. Both alive but in, in care homes, not able to come out. And so times change. Things change. And things change for many of us quite drastically, quite quickly. I think that's one thing that we have noted over these three years is how quick the change came. And when, when it happens, where are we? When the rubber hits the road... What is it that matters to us? Is it actually, is it money? Is it our wealth? Is it the, the house that we live in? Is it the cars that we've got outside on the driving? And I'll just point out, all of those things became irrelevant almost overnight because things happen quickly. One day, everybody was fine, and the next day, people weren't fine. And three years on, we're still seeing the repercussions, and now we have a national emergency effectively in place with people freezing cold in their homes because they can't afford to heat and eat. These are real issues. Poverty is real. Injustice is real. And yet into this darkness, in that passage I read from Isaiah, into that incredible, and it says a deep darkness, and that's interesting, isn't it? It's not just darkness, but it's a deep darkness. You know that darkness that when you are in absolute pitch black, you cannot see your hand in front of your face. It takes ages just to get the sense of where you are. And that, I feel, is often where our nation is now. You talk to people, and it is characterised by one word. And it's the word I want to talk about. It's fear. For many of us, we've been left with the detritus, the rubbish that has been left from the pandemic. And fear has left its imprint on our minds, on our hearts, on our day-to-day -day lives. What this community tried to do in, that, in this time is to provide friendship, to, in some positive way, displace that fear with love and with friendship. Remember that wonderful thing we use, that, that, that those little unremembered acts, that better part of a man, those little unremembered acts of love and of kindness. But still, but still, my friends, um, as we come to Christmas 2022, fear grips our hearts. And into this comes these two words from the angels, fear not, fear not. And those two words are what I want you to really grab. But why do we fear not? What was the angel, what, was he, what, what, what were they saying? What were they saying? What were they bringing to us? They brought us a present that said, here it is, open that. And it, as you open that present, it says, fear not. And why? You turn the card over. And they're written on that card, says they said these words. Because I bring you great tidings, good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people. Because there's a reason for the season. There's a reason why we don't fear. Because the Prince of Peace has come into the world. He breaks into the darkness. He shines a light into that darkest room, into the darkest place, and the darkest recesses of our lives. The things that take us over, the things that possess us, the habits that we can't break, the stuff that terrifies us. And he shines a light in to the, 
deepest corners of that room. And that room is our lives. That's us. And what I encourage you to do in these few moments that we have together, as you embrace Christmas, as you embrace this Christmas message, is that you replace that fear with the Prince of Peace. You see, because that perfect love has come, and perfect love, says the Bible, casts out fear. And I want you to put your best foot forward. I want you to put your best foot forward, because actually times are going to be tough. And they may even be tough this Christmas for you, where you are. But I want you to put your best foot forward, knowing where you're going, because the light has come, and you can see where you are. Just last night, I, I literally, I got out of bed and I, I, Sue was coughing in the other room. She wasn't well. And so I, it was pitch black. <clears throat> Couldn't see a thing. And um, suddenly from outside, obviously a cat walked past the neighbor's garden and light came into the room. And I could see my way to the loo. <laughs> Otherwise I would have been wandering, falling over things. And that... That, my friends, in a more serious level, is where we are emotionally in our lives. I want you to let the light of Christ, the light that Christ brings into the world, the light of the world, shine in on you. And the great thing about this, and the Bible's quite clear about it, is that that light shines on us, and then we become lights in our own lives. Think of that, that responsibility. So wherever you are at Christmas, if you can be of assistance, you can help people. Give Shine a bit of light into their own lives, into the loneliness that they're feeling. If they need a bit of help and money, give them a bit. If you have some, share it. Just share it. If you have some food, go and have a cup of tea with them. Something. Do something that makes a difference and bring light into their lives. You see, so this is what happens. Jesus comes in. The light shines. He shines on us. We reflect that light out to other people. That's been my always been my and Sue and I uh, our purpose of running this community we haven't done it for personal gain we clearly haven't and Rachel I know and Claire and Ben who run it and all the guests that have come on countless guests who found that coming into this room is a very special event when it can cast some light into dark places we Sue and I pray that that will be your experience this Christmas God bless you all That your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary, did you know That your baby boy would save our sons and daughters Did you know That your baby boy has come to make you new This child that you delivered one day deliver you Mary, did you know That your baby boy With gifts height to a blind man Mary, did you know That your baby boy Would calm the storm with his hand Did you know That your baby boy Has walked where angels trod When you kiss your little baby You kissed the face of God Mary, did you know Mary, did you know
that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? The sweeping child you're holding. Is the great Mary, did you know Mary? Did And so to me singing a song for you, one of my favourites, it's actually one, the only one I can claim to fame as my number one on the iTunes charts many years ago now, and I recorded it about 12 years ago, and it's still one of my favourites, and I always sing it at Christmas. It was on the Holy Night album back in the day, and um, still enjoyed by so many. And it's just the story from the point of view of his mother, who, give, who gave birth to him. And what did she see? What did she know? Who knows what she knew? Nobody really knows. Um, but it's, a, it's lovely to think about that and, and the life that he was going on to live as a boy and then as a man. Thought in the straw. the day the angel came It seemed that everything had changed The only certain thing Was the child that moved within On the road that would not end Winding down to Bethlehem So far away from home Just a blanket on the floor Of a vacant cattle store But there the child was born She held him in her arms And as she laid him down to sleep She wondered, will it always be So bitter yet so sweet and did she see the In the straw by his head a fall And did she smell blood In the air on that starry night Then the words of ancient seers Tumbled down the centuries A virgin shall conceive God with his prince of peace Man of sorrow, strangest name of Joseph There it comes again 
so bitter, yet so sweet, and he cheese he left, destroyed by his head of thorn, and he cheese smell in the air on that starry. She watched him through the years Her joy was mingled with her tears And she'd feel it all again The glory and the shame And when the miracles began She wondered, who is this man? And where will this soul end? Till against the darkening sky The sun she loved was lifted high And with his dying breath She heard him say Father forgive And to the criminal beside Today with me in paradise So bitter yet so Sing together that old carol, that old perennial favourite, O come, all ye faithful, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh, 
Thank you very much for joining us, all you faithful people of the JV community. So wonderful to have you with us, as usual. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining in with the carols. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in in the first place, actually. And uh, we just want to say that we love you. And thank you for joining us, as you do, faithfully, so many Sundays. And uh, we wouldn't be doing this without you. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I'm just going to hold to... Yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much. And it's been it's lovely to have Sue. She's been ill for a long time now, coughing her guts up and um, not feeling well at all. But we, we know for many of you, Christmas will be a, you know, a tough time and um, it, it's not an easy time for so many. And we, we really do trust that you will find a way of celebrating which will, and this, hopefully, this will help well, you help. to do this. And you can watch this again um, and sing along with those carols. And so many more are going, just going to the JV uh, page on YouTube and you can watch this again and remember many of the guests and some of the things that have gone on. But we just say to this, you now, on the 15th of January, 15th of January, there will be um, uh, a special, a special one of these that you'll be able to uh, watch. Now, I won't be from this room, I don't believe, but it will be from um, somewhere and you'll have a great time watching it, listening and tuning in with your usual friends and uh, we, we look forward to that time. We're going to have a little bit of a break after this. Um, my final carol service is on the 20th and if you, um, if, you, if you can't think of anything else to do, then just tune in to JV once again <laughs> on Catch Up. We thank also this time Rachel and Claire and Ben um, who've worked so hard, particularly Rachel, who's given an awful lot of herself to doing this and so many other shows for us and videos and goodness knows what. And we ask you to send best wishes to her and to the whole of, of the Lawrence family for letting her just carry on doing this for us. It's been a privilege. So we just say to all of you a very Merry Christmas. We do. And a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Exactly. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye now. your heart be light from now on our troubles will be out of sight oh and have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide game From now on 
our troubles will be miles away. Oh, here we are, as in olden days, happy golden of your faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once more and through the years we all will be together if the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest bar. And have yourself a merry little Christmas. Play for us, Ben Carson. song about nine o'clock at night on Christmas Day when all the presents have been opened, all the children are asleep and you've done the cooking and here we go. Just sit quietly and enjoy. Oh, here we are as in olden days happy golden Faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once more and through through the years we all will be together if the fates allow. Hang a shining star upon the highest bar And have yourself a merry little Christmas